Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back for more punishment. Uh, uh, of, uh, of the awakening kind. And, you know, there's so many things um, that some of you will know. Others of you will be like, wow, I've never heard of that. Um, you know, sometimes I think I make the bad assumption and assume things that I shouldn't be assuming. And so I, I want to capture some uh, some really key points here and some of this is going to be a recap others going to be brand new with uh, new things coming into the mix and we got some recommendations uh, again for let's say uh, homework yes. <laughs> oh man we love you guys you guys have, have been fabulous uh, we we love looking at the support over on on patreon and the comments as well as also youtube and rumble and bradian and BitChute. Um, we couldn't do it without you guys also over on ko-fi which we use as far as when people book sessions this was a patreon exclusive um, that didn't start that way, but then we ended up speaking um, just so clearly and plainly, and it felt like we, we better do this one on, on Patreon. It actually kind of combined a couple of different videos that I had in my mind that were going to be separate into one, um, 46 minutes, and uh, it's an eye-opener for many. Again, you could join Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, there's 10% off when you do sign up for a year in advance. That's $10.80 uh, for a year, and that's typically about one or two exclusives a week, sometimes more, uh, and again, uh, a little bit clearer uh, language without the codes, which I know a lot of the codes have become part of our regular you know, vocabulary now. Well, yeah, I mean, we have support from you guys, and you guys don't seem to mind too much that we speak in code, but it, it's how we're going to get this going. And I mean, looking at Patreon and all of the support we have, it's so heartwarming, and we are so grateful, and we absolutely could not do this without you. It's like maybe we get the ball rolling, but it couldn't keep rolling without your guys' support. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Deal with the devil. This is a phrase, a deal with the devil, a pact with the devil. Um, there's been movies. There's uh, obviously a lot of old time uh, stories, allegorical in nature. Yet, you know, there is absolutely a basis for this. And in fact, I think it's becoming clear to many people just how many um, celebrities and politicians have made pacts with the devil. And again, when you look to the devil, um, we could use it in an allegorical sense. I see these arguments all the time, again, about like astro theology, and that everything is just simply an allegory about the inner struggle within us. And, and yes, th that is true. It is really all about the struggle within us. Are we going to go the egoic way? Are we going to go society's way? Uh, are we going to do whatever it is we have to do to win? Is it all about winning, winning, winning to you? Because again, uh, this is individual. Uh, this is an individual basis. This, these are decisions that we make every single day. And, you know, sometimes because uh, for myself, I, I've been out of the corporate system for 10 years. Um, I, I haven't really been answering to anybody but myself or you guys in that, you know, those that who are supporting us through our work, it's, it's definitely easier to go your own way when you're not answering to anybody and just basically uh, follow what feels good in your heart or soul. This world is all about compromises, and this world is always trying to get you to make a pact with the devil, a deal with the devil. Now, that definition of, well, who is the devil? Or you could say Satan. Again, Satan's the adversary, and when we make it in an individual way, uh, you, you might think of pitchfork and horns, or this engraving of Faust pact with Mephisto. Now, this is circa 1840. This is from uh, a German legend. You know, there's many different ways uh, we can view this, but it's all really about, are we going to be, in my mind, it all boils down to, are we doing things for the greater good? 
Are we trying to better this world that we're coming into for a temporary experience? Or are we doing it to feed our ego? Um, is it all about self-centered or is it about service to others? And I think, of course, the, the ideal thing is, is threading that, that line, and ideal for most people, not for all, is threading the line and you know living out your life to its fullest potential in the way that you want to without harming others but also you know with helping as many as as we can i i do not believe that most people are really dark and evil you know dark in the sense of uh diabolical i don't think that's the case honestly I do think that there are real entities out there, very, very real entities, that do play uh, the part of the devil, of Satan, of demons. Yeah, you know, again, I we do not believe in the whole blood sacrifice, uh, original sin thing. You know, we have a, a different take on it. And yet, we do agree that, you know, humans are absolutely always being tempted and prodded and poked and manipulated by demonic forces. Mm. It, it does. It's, it's a very, very difficult time right now because a lot of people are not doing so well. There is a lot, a lot of threats out there, not just physical threats, but health threats, you know, emotional threats, these threats, those threats. And everyone to, to a degree really just wants to be safe. They want to make themselves safe. And so many people have been traumatized. So many people have been traumatized by this system. And this system is not working for many of us. Um, but here here we are here we are and to me it, it, it is all about changing things within and, and really you can't do much for anyone else until you work on yourself you got to work on yourself and and in that sense um, self-love is so very important and it, it's something that we all need to do and it, if we can care for ourselves enough then our cup is full and whatever is overflowing is going to other people which is good because other people need it other people need help and every single day we're faced with decisions you know am i going to sacrifice myself or am i going to do this other thing you know what is best it, it's so hard to make good decisions out there i mean even even for food what what really breaks my heart mostly about this system is the, are the, the moms and dads out there who have children who can only afford so much in food and they have to go the way of something that's GMO or something that's less than healthy for them. And, and they have to because they're broke. You know, you, you have the choice of uh, keeping the lights on or feeding your family. And, th and that's <laughs> that's constant. And, and if you do feed your family, you can't feed them the best food. And that's just heartbreaking. But this is where we are. So I think we have it within us to do something different. And this is why I love you guys helping us so much to create that wave so we can get more families on board, helping more families, you know, families with farms, helping families who need healthy food, something like that. You know, we just got to get it out there. We got to get it rolling because it's, it's possible. We just need to figure out how we're going to do it. Absolutely. So, you know, this deal with the devil, um, again, is something that we'll find in multiple tales, but is also very much based in reality on this planet. Often it's the case in these stories where the person that makes the pact with the devil or Satan, what have you, sometimes tries to outwit the devil, but ends up losing in the end. Uh, you know, in some sort of technicality. Well, you know, there's an awful lot being uh, exposed right now. And we talk about celebrities. As we've said before, um, I do not believe that it's possible for um, somebody uh, that's a top echelon celebrity to not have made a pact with the devil. That's just the way, you know, it feels to me. This is what I sense all that glitters is not gold as you know a line from stairway to heaven 
you know, here you see certain people and, uh, you know, the things that have been revealed about each one of these people is, is really, uh, if we go back and we were 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, we may be very, very shocked and startled. It depends on how f how long you've been on this road to truth and how long you have been deep diving into exactly what goes on out there. You know, have these entities made a dull, uh, a dull, uh, a deal with the devil? Have they doled out their souls? Um, by the way, uh, him, you know, P. Diddy there has been placed on suicide watch. Does that sound familiar? And really, what what does this mean? Is, does this mean that um, it'll be apparent that he's leaving this 3D reality, but in reality, he's just going to some island off the coast of Greece or maybe somewhere in the Caribbean or maybe somewhere around Fiji, uh, maybe even, you know, somewhere that we don't really, uh, we're not privy to, somewhere <laughs> south of Antarctica so to speak you know again the things that are coming out are so devilish <laughs> satanic diabolical and it's going to implicate so many other people and perhaps you know again there's so many that are leaving and apparently leaving the highest positions on the planet in the corporate structure we were talking about 23 and me and and all those entities involved in that and actually, on that last video, I, I shared the Patreon exclusive. I did share that I didn't realize at all there was a tie there between uh, a scientist at CERN and you know the Woshiki sisters. Um, again, one that, one of which is supposedly no longer with us. It, <coughs> again, twenty three and me, Google YT. It, <coughs> it's it's all part of one structure that tempts people again they tempt them by fame fortune money everything that you would ever whatever it is it's very very much exactly that uh satan out in the desert going up to the mountaintop with yeshua jesus and saying all this can be yours just sign right here in your blood yeah, it, this is what the system does. So, I mean, there's a startling amount of truth there at this point in time that people are starting to really wake up uh, and, and understand. And when you look deeper, too, you understand uh, that Puff Daddy, again, was a rapper uh, credited with discovery and cultivation of many artists, Notorious Big, uh, no longer with us, Mary J. Blige, Usher, and it goes on and on. Uh, Grammy Awards, MTV Vi Video Music Awards, it goes on. Uh, you know, most successful rap producer in 1997, born in Harlem, raised in Mount Vernon. You know, Bad Boy Records, it it's just goes on and on and on. Did he sell his soul to the devil? What do you guys think? But when you look at what is the foundational point of that whole hip-hop culture you literally have cia agents admitting it was a psyop designed to corrupt the youth and sow division in america you know again deathbed confessions but there's also a lot of clues if you look into things that have been declassified through uh, the freedom of information act and I'll have all the links, as always, for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. The CIA designed this to boost certain divisiveness because, again, this is this this is the the modus operandi. It's Genesis 11 that I quote so many times. Look, humans are united. We cannot have this. You know, I, I haven't brought this up in a while but this whole tower of babel thing it says it all the world was united they're building they're not fighting and again when you go and you look at this it says but the lord came down to see the city and and what they were doing if they're speaking one language 
and they begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible. Let us go down, confuse their language so they will not understand each other. You can't have people united. You have to confuse them. And it's fascinating to see, again, confuse their language. Now, when you look to what word was actually used, this is Yahweh talking to the other Elohim. Again, uh, look to Paul Davis and uh, look to Mauro Bellino for tons of videos on how the Bible is not about, it's not about the creator of this universe. It's never been that way. The Torah is not about the creator of this universe. It's just that simple. It, it's about a particular group of people and who they serve. That's it. Who they serve. It's an individual and it is a system. And again, the Talmud is explicitly clear in this as well. So, you know, again, you can't have humans united. It's through division and getting us to fight ourselves that they rule. And as soon as we figure that out, then we could change things. Now, they have certain families that they've used to control all of this and all aspects of it. And this is very, very true. When you look deeply, you'll see the Rockefellers created the business because it is a business model of Western medicine. What's a business all about? Profits, <laughs> creating profits. And this is the case. And when you look closer, you find out that all the schools that were teaching things of a more naturopathic ma uh, nature, you know, again, they bought them up, they put them out of business, and they, they put in their own business in its place. This should be labeled alternative medicine, not, not the natural cures that have been around forever. I think that's very unfair. You know, I mean, they have created words for things that are, that are natural and taken things that are unnatural and made that mainstream and made that the first choice and the first option for everyone. And I've talked a little bit about this before on my own uh, journey through health and, you know, what I went through only having the understanding that it's these doctors they're the only ones that could help me so I thought and I, I was in enough pain emotionally and physically it's like just just help me somebody please please help me and I had all the trust in the world with with these people because I thought they cared I, I really thought they cared and certainly at some level they did care but they had no idea what they were doing they were just doing what they were told from another book that was doing what it was told from another book or another person that it was doing what it was told from another book from another person and going by assumptions that were made through tests and trials wh whoever was funded and and that's the that's the treatment i received you know, I did run into people who truly, truly, truly cared about me, but they didn't know what to do with me. And and I was going through an awakening of massive proportions and a dark night of the soul of massive proportions. It was dangerous in my case. And I, I had these Dracos surrounding me. <laughs> Here, I'm going to help you. Oh, God. Talk about years and years and years of, of heartache, pain, pressure. But you know what? I look back, I, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for a minute because I get to help some of you guys get through what you're going through and give you some direction and give you some understanding that, hey, this isn't the only way. We can do something different here. Does it take dedication? Yes. Does it take changing your whole life? Sure, it does. But at least you get to choose. At least you see the choice. I had no knowledge of healing at all. And everything has a purpose, so so that's okay. I just couldn't see it then, but I can see it now. I can look back and see it now. Yeah, this this system is not it's not okay. It, it's not set up to help us, even though there's a lot of people that appear like they're going to help you put on their coat and do the thing. And and a lot of nurses out there, they're just natural healers, but they get caught up in the system. So all they know to do is do what the system tells them to do. Uh, humans really need to guard against that because we are apt to just go down the road and do what somebody says um, because we think that they know better but that's not always the case you are your own best doctor yeah so the business story of western medicine again starts in a modern sense with john d rockefeller who lived from 1839 1937 almost 100 years 
was considered the wealthiest American in his lifetime. And, you know, again, he controlled 90 percent of all the petroleum refineries in America. And then you see that this ended up turning into the medical system that was controlled. So then we have energy and we have the medical system here, you know, coming under so much control by one entity who is, you know, again, part of uh, this real control system. And one thing that many people don't understand that was done too was controlling the music and shifting from 432, which is a natural vibration that will give us um, these beautiful patterns uh, that are harmonious into patterns that are very, very disharmonious. And so the music industry was tuned to 440 hertz since the International Standards Organization, the ISO, endorsed it in 1953. And, you know, again, uh, it's fascinating to see a lot of the things that Germany was doing in the 1930s um, and into the 40s uh, has been adopted and, and adapted by those nations that uh, it was fighting against. And you know, here you have, it was also a theory that it was changed, was dictated by Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels. He used to make it make people think and feel in a certain manner and make them a prisoner of certain consciousness. Oh yeah, you know, again, fluoride in the water, which is illegal in many countries of the world, but is, is mandated in, in the United States. It's done to create a docile population because this population here in this country has more, more <laughs> by far, more small arms than any other country in the world. And so they, they are looking for a means to control a uh, very armed po populace. And when you look to 440, again, this, this is middle C. Uh, its tuning was changed, and it ties back to the same, again, family. And when we're talking about the fact that the FBI, CIA, who, again, really don't work for us, even though they use our taxpayer money to do these things, they really work for the elites, they work for the wealthy, they work for... The, the power structure that's hidden uh, behind things. When you look to human blood, what happens to human blood when it's exposed to a certain frequency? This is um, from Barbara O'Neill, who is a naturopath. And by the way, you know, there were hundreds of naturopaths that started to have accidents and started to go missing, oh, you know, 10 years or so before uh, the big plague upon the land happened. And, you know, as someone that worked in the field with naturopaths, it, it was something that they were nervous about. Um, it was very, very well known. <sighs> this is really cool. And this is an excerpt uh, from, this is 10 minutes here. And it, it shows that what we listen to literally affects our blood which is obviously going to affect the health of of our body if you are listening to um and i'm just saying this now i do have an appreciation for the old school stuff in 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 doses yes i, I did enjoy led zeppelin even black sabbath and deep purple and you know these bands from that era um, again, I tune my own guitars to 4, 432 hertz uh, in middle C because it is harmonious. I think some musicians knew this instinctively as there were a lot of guitarists that dropped things down half a step for those that understand this, which does bring it pretty close. Like when you tune to E flat, uh, you are pretty close to that 432 hertz. I think that was almost done instinctively. Uh, again, people like Stevie Ray Vaughan used to do this. When you see the patterns that come out in our blood, it's shocking uh, the difference between 440 and also 432. The other part of this experiment is they put part of a control unit in a Faraday cage where it was very isolated and then what did they do they had uh, the other part be exposed to a person that was singing peace 
singing peace. When they took the blood out of the Faraday cage, which was cut off from everything else, it was all dead. And when they took the uh, blood that had been exposed to somebody singing the word peace, they actually divided and there was more cells alive than the cell counter could count. What you are listening to is absolutely controlling your consciousness and it's also controlling your health. And this is why I find sound healing so impressive. I mean, it, it's amazing and instinctually uh, when I first learned about it, I mean, I grabbed onto it like it was going to be illegal to do tomorrow. I mean, I, I when I started to understand sound healing, it's like this, <laughs> this is straight from the Pleiades. This is something that is being given to us. This is a technology of ancient proportions that's being given to us for us to embrace and utilize for our health, for our well-being. And I, I just thought it was so impressive, those cells that were exposed to nothing. I mean, they just died off. They just died off. And, you know, they were they were uh, secluded. So, I mean, what does that tell you about our society now as a whole? Look what they are doing to us. They are secluding us. They are keeping us away from each other. But w if we were close to another person, we our cells can be happy and they can divide of course we we have to be in a good mood and we have to <laughs> be happy but we have choices we have choices in this world so if we are being together singing amongst each other doing mantras you know doing uh drum circles and we are happy our cells are dividing these hormones these happy hormones in our body they are just firing off and look look what the controllers are doing to us every day they're separating us from our own people because they know it, it's creating a certain type of die off of our cells and they know it's creating a death also of our of our brains and it's just the most hideous, hideous plan. But but they don't mind. They, they don't mind the plan because it keeps them where they want to be. It keeps them in control. It keeps them having the upper hand. It, it's, um, it's just something that I, I think if we don't really point out strongly over the next year or so, we might not have that ability to point it out. And I'm really hoping many people are going to grab hold of this and really understand it. Really, really, really understand it for how important it is. And this is a two hour plus m movie uh, called The F the One Field. It's a film by Sippy Raz. And this is from the Cryon channel, Cryon Lee Carroll, who has done um, such uh, wonderful work on trying to affect the consciousness of humanity. Uh, for many many years and you know when <laughs> uh, when I said to Cindy well I know they know all about the field at least they're familiar with that again that term um, you know she was like no no let's go over this again we need to uh, again go a little bit deeper this I would hardly recommend looking at um, looking at this uh, particular video and you know two hours sure you know it it's two hours it's a little bit long but again understanding these things is life changing um this book it's right here you see it amazon prime it's only 1089 right now this is probably the best single um primer written in very very simple terms layman terms for understanding uh, the field that we live in. It, it, it is a consciousness field, it's an energy field. Everything that we uh, see is energy vibrating at certain frequencies and frequency is key. Uh, again, if, if you envision yourself in a uh, orb, an egg, this is just one t meditative technique. You could, if you're really having a lot of pain, you could, envision yourself in a sky blue egg and every inhale draw that energy into the body every exhale just simply push away anything that's uh, disharmonious anything that's painful anything that doesn't serve your highest self's best purpose so you could visualize it as a smoky color or you know a darker color leaving the body and going outside of that egg because the egg is going to be basically representing your aura and by adding <clears throat> excuse me adding in the sky blue color 
you're going to be adding in a color which is vibrating at a certain frequency and that frequency is going to bring about a reduction in pain this whole world we see everything about it is is holographic in nature and the reality is that it all is just waiting for our attention it's your intention that does affect your personal reality now what we have going on in the bigger geopolitical uh, scene is is a a culture that's been manipulated in order to be in order to be consistently constantly self-inflicting pain because there's so many of these parasitic energies out there that literally feed off of our pain and suffering and we we understand that so really if we did as a collective get enough people to shift this we could literally push them out of our reality but that takes uh, a certain amount of people a certain consensus to literally do it it could happen if people did understand if there was an awakening that that really grasped the the minds and souls and hearts of people where they truly wanted to make that change and understood just how much they were being manipulated we could literally take down the system like it, it just in in a matter of no time at all uh, you know compared to the time that's been in power and we could do it without uh, any sort of uh, aggressiveness or any more war and conflict. This was a good book for those that are trying to look at things from a more scientific standpoint. Now, this is um, Paul Davies in his book, The Mind of God, Scientific Basis for a Rational World. It's a thought-provoking exploration of the ultimate causes and meaning of the universe and really what is the universe here for this is from a scientific point of view but what you find is that it lines up with the sanatana dharma you know traditional uh hindu thought that the world is in fact created by consciousness for consciousness to explore learn and grow you know again we are living in the mind of god these are books by Richard L. Thompson. You can't go wrong with any of them. Um, he is somebody that is a great uh, place to, to start if you want to start walking down uh, the Sanatana Dharma path and start to understand uh, Hindu thought. And again, every single religion on the planet has been distorted a little. So, you know, when you look at the purity of things you have to really wade through it there is dogma everywhere and you know in in hinduism too you know you'll have uh, shaivites and vaishnavites and shaktiites and and all different branches uh and again uh you know it's it's a matter of take what serves you and don't take what doesn't serve you uh, but when you look into some of his books, uh, and, and actually all these books are, are pretty good, uh, Alien Identities was a, a really good book because it, it, the first half of it is all about the modern UFO phenomena. This was published back in 1993. Uh, I think I first read it right when it was published. And then the second half is just showing how these entities that we're talking about you know they're really the same entities uh that we see in in the hindu myths and legends they are and many people have realized this too forbidden archaeology i mean these these are like must have must reads uh, hidden history of the human race michael a cremo richard l thompson did it with him as well um great books you can't go wrong with any of them maya the world as virtual reality um, this was published in 2003. We have this one too. I've read it multiple times and it really does get into the quantum physics end of it. But again, we can see uh, that what was understood by the Rishis, the Rishis are beings that had a higher knowledge and was given to humanity um, from these Rishis, which in reality, who are the Rishis? Well, you know, if you ask somebody that's Hindu themselves, um, more often than not, they'll probably tell you, well, these are kind of ascended masters. This is what they are. 
Veda cosmology and astronomy. You know, there's there's so much here that this one too, mysteries of the sacred universe, uh, that gets into the Bhu Mandala which again is something that the flat earthers will look at and say this proves that it's flat well you know the reality is um we are living in a in a hologram this is a hologram the, the natural matrix is a hologram and it's all about conforming to our intent now they've manipulated it so we're conforming the world to their intent and that has led to the nonstop strife and, and all the chaos in this world and nonstop wars. It, it's a matter of understanding, yes, it is a projection, but it's here not to trap souls. Uh, it, it's here to enlighten souls because ultimately we are eternal consciousness. And everything we see in our material universe is made of um, the same substance. And ultimately we have the four elements which arise from a fifth element which you might call the ether the akash you might call it um, the life force or you might call it the field that's not the ultimate reality though too you know when you start looking deeper you realize this is all this particular level which is all we know uh, again but consciousness is even beyond that it's even beyond that and you know there are references to that that there are realms of a totally different order much higher up but first it's just the understanding that we are one particular point in a unified field mm. you know what i see um i i look at the universe and i look at the world and i i look at all the things around me and I look at the shape of our hands and our bodies and the trees uh, the grass the mountains and I have an understanding when you bring together light and sound you have form um, but could you imagine what if what if one or the other was cut off you know I I kind of kind of maybe it's a silly thought I don't know but I think if the sound or the light were cut off you have things do not have form they no longer take shape so is that the flat universe we're talking about but you add in the light and the sound everything takes this form and uh the our bodies the way we speak our voices i mean we are always shaping something with our words our words are so very important um there's a lot of things that we can do good with our words and there's a lot of harm we can create with our words but we need to understand when we speak they take form and we have a responsibility for those words that are going out there into the universe and if somebody is shaping our viewpoint and then they're the ones who are actually putting their ideas and we are voicing their words not ours so i i think it's very important we find out who we are and kind of shut down anything around us and realize make sure that whatever we're doing it's coming from our heart and we're not doing the work of someone else yes and, and i thought it was uh curious that cindy brought up that word form as you can see these these over here an investigation into the nature of consciousness and form uh, absolutely, you know, and you know, demonstration by information theory that life cannot arise from matter. No, matter doesn't cause consciousness. Matter exists because consciousness causes matter to exist so that consciousness can explore it. So, again, uh, we are inherently, uh, we, we are eternal. I mean, that's it. But we're not human, even. We're temporarily human. We're ultimately formless consciousness. Um, and that is a big realization. So uh, the Sanatana Dharma, its roots and historical context of its use, this literally means, it could mean eternal religion, eternal truth, eternal way. Um, uh, again, for those that really want to go down an exploration of consciousness, because when you look at the Torah, when, when you look at the Torah, it, it's not really an exploration of consciousness. It's about keeping track of one particular group of people and, and who they are as a, a, a unity. And, you know, who is in control and charge of them? Who do they report to? 
so to speak. It has nothing to do with uh, things like, you know, the afterlife and consciousness and what is consciousness. The Yoga Sutras do. And if you really want to learn more about what are we exactly, go into the Yoga Sutras, go into the Shiva Sutras. Um, go go into the Tao Te Ching again if you want a different flavor, uh, or the I Ching, the Book of Changes. You know this this is all these are deep and and these are um, focused on the bigger questions. You know not not about how do you serve one particular alien identity, because the other thing that you get from this system is the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of humanoid beings in our galaxy. They knew this. There are beings on different densities, different dimensions. This was all completely understood in past ages. Uh, we're not alone. We've never been alone. And in fact, you know, there are groups of these beings that are called uh, suras. Well, it's even specified the types of ships that certain beings use, what their ships look like, and also the type of warfare that some of these beings uh, prefer as there are groups of these demonic beings that we call asuras that prefer biological warfare and this is exactly what they use as their first line of attack on certain entities when they are taking over planets and so when we see here thousands of people witnessing a ufo this is guadalajara mexico uh, again this doesn't feel very advanced the reality is when we look to those beings called um anunnaki um, and again, that's a broad term. It's a really broad term. If we want to be very, very specific, uh, we can talk about the people that are coming out of the Nibiruan uh, system. And again, Nibiru itself is made up of many different races. There's, there's humanoid beings there. There are beings that are more avian there. There are beings that are very, very reptilian there. When we look to Enlil and Enki and feel into what they are, they are human reptilian hybrids, not not Homo sapiens. Now, again, Homo sapiens is a more um, modified version that's you know here on Earth with lesser abilities on the whole, because we have been GMO'd. These bodies, these vehicles have been GMO'd. Again, they don't want you driving Ferraris and Lamborghinis. They want you bumping around in Yugos. You know, they they, uh, they need humans to do their work. They need humans for the source energy, the source spark to, to feed off of in some way, shape, or form, whether it be 3D or other, other uh, dimensions. They need humans. And it seems like with our energy, we are a little bit like whack-a-mole. They really want to try to keep us down keep us down and keep us at, down at a certain level but because of our source spark we continue to rise up and up and up and beyond uh, what they thought we could and I think we're in that position now where we're rising up and beyond and getting a little bit difficult to handle so in comes all of the the rules in comes the chaos in comes the 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 traumas in comes the psyops you know because they're just trying to control us and you know I, I, how, how do you how do you conduct yourself unless you know that those controllers are out there? It's, it's, it's best to know, best to know what they're up to. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to do a deep dive, um, please do, uh, you know, start with anything that you feel drawn to because you are a unique individual. You are a unique fractal of the one consciousness. Indeed. As always, guys, we thank you for your support. Look forward to your comments. Please do uh, share also more about what you want us to go deeper into. What do you want to see us talking about more uh, specifically? And, and we will address that. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.